Hello there, and welcome to India. <laughs> Can't believe I am saying that. I finally made it. Been here uh, a couple days now. Uh, yesterday I just slept because I was a little jet lag, but thought I'd get out today and get this show on the road. Uh, I haven't filmed in a couple months, and so kind of got to get this started again. Let's do it. I just came down to the Lodi Colony. Found this place online. They uh, they've painted a bunch of the buildings here in the uh, in these murals, and that'd be a good place to to start these videos. You know, we can go down to the crazy and hectic places in a little while. So I thought I'd ease ease into it with this neighborhood. I was reading. This is a uh, government buildings these are i guess government officials maybe living here it was built by the british raj in the 1940s but yeah okay so how i wanted to start this india series i wanted to share a little story with you guys uh this is a story that i find fascinating it's a story that involves india of course but it also involves Indonesia, it involves the English, it involves the Dutch. What is Holland? What do you mean, what is it? It's a country right next to Belgium. No, that's the Netherlands. Holland is the Netherlands. Then who are the Dutch? And uh, you can sprinkle a little bit of Pocahontas in there as well. Yeah, and it also kind of touches everyone out there who is watching this video in a, in a small way. This is a story that takes place in Indonesia. It's one of the coolest places I've ever been. The place I'm talking about is called Bandanera. It's an island in the Banda Sea. It's in East Indonesia, in the Maluku Islands. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. But what makes this cluster of islands so special? Well, at one point, it was the only place in the world that produced nutmeg. It's the only place you could find it in the entire world. So eventually they'll all split like this? Yeah. Hold it. Can I take it? Yeah. I want to take it. You... Mm, you can smell it. Smell. Nowadays, of course, you can find nutmeg just about anywhere you want. Uh, well, not necessarily. It doesn't grow just about anywhere, but it's not that hard to get. But back in the 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, you could get extremely rich with just a small bag of nutmeg. And that is why so many crazy madmen from Portugal and the Netherlands and Britain and France and Spain, you know, that's why they risked their lives and traveled you know, six to eight to nine months to the other side of the world in search for, you know, these spices, cinnamon, pepper, uh, cloves, nutmeg. And well, they all went, or they wanted to go to uh, Bondanetta because like I said, it had this precious nutmeg. And at the time, uh, in those times, it was believed that nutmeg was, uh, you know, it was used for medicinal purposes. It was because it was so rare and, you know, so expensive. People believed that it could do all these wonderful things for you. <laughs> well, they were way off. <laughs> but uh, that didn't stop people from going crazy to get there. And so let's, uh, let's cross this street and see what's on the other side. Very uh, quiet neighborhood, which is nice to uh, start this first video out. I'm kind of rusty. I haven't done this in a while. So, where was I? Uh, well, I'm going to be talking a, not a whole lot, but I will be talking from time to time about uh, the East India Company, the British East India Company, the uh, company that helped colonize India for... Uh, 300 plus years and so their uh, their existence in India started around the early 1600s 
when I was 16, 10. But one of their first places that they wanted to go to was the Banda Islands. But the Portuguese had already beat them and the Dutch had already beaten them there. And so when the, uh, the English went there, it was around 1614, they were only able to capture one island. And that island is Room. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go to that island because the water was too choppy and I went at the wrong time of year. But the Dutch, they had already captured, they had control of all the other islands. They were ruthless and brutal and they eventually went on to massacre. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, what a bird. They eventually went on to massacre like 14,000 of the 15,000 people that lived on Bondaneta. Uh, they were whew, ruthless. A guy named uh, Jan Kuhn, I think I'm saying his name right. He was a brutal, brutal guy. And well, at that time, the, the Dutch were a much stronger uh, fleet. I mean, they had much more firepower. They had uh, bigger ships. And the British at that time couldn't really do much. And so, why I find this story so fascinating, there's a book called Nathaniel's Nutmeg. And this guy named Nathaniel Courthope, he, uh, he went to this island named Rune. And he stayed there for four years waiting for backup from, from England, right? He stayed there for four years. That's how important this island was. And so he was able to uh, take the cannons off the ship and set up a fort and kind of hold this island hostage, hoping that more people would come and rescue him. Well, long story short, that didn't happen. He got tricked into leaving the island and uh, he had thought that the other Orancayas, the other chieftains, the other leaders of the other islands were about to revolt against the Dutch and well he left and so as he was sailing away the Dutch said haha gotcha and killed him and he sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Something like that. Hello. And uh, ooh, let's take a look at this one. Beautiful. <laughs> the Mona Lisa? Something like that. And so that was the end of Nathaniel Courthope. Cohen was able to defeat him. They were able to snatch Rune Island. And from then on, they had a monopoly on nutmeg. And well, that's not where the story ends. See, some. 40, 50 years later, the English were able to, to get control of some of the Banda Islands again. And during this time, the Dutch and the English, they were at war with each other. There was the Treaty of Breda, which essentially left the island of Rune with uh, the Dutch. And the island that they exchanged it for was Manhattan Island in New York. And so that is one of those crazy things that I can't believe happened. In 1650 something, the Dutch essentially exchanged a small island in the middle of friggin' nowhere for Manhattan Island, which was at first named New Amsterdam. They, the English changed it to New York. And uh, kind of the, the rest is history. New York, Manhattan, Manhattan Island went on to be one of the, the biggest and I don't know, well-known cities in the world and this island in the middle of the Banda Sea is still just a speck. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that just kind of blows my mind. One last thing. Oh, before I forget. All right, is there any more? There's a, there is a uh, mural over there. For some reason I thought there was a lot more. Let's, uh, Let's just go down here. Let's just go down here. And so, oh yeah, where Pocahontas comes into the story. 
So when Nathaniel Courthope was waiting on the Rune Island, a guy named Sir Thomas Dale was sent from England to come rescue him. And this is the same Sir Thomas Dale that sailed from the, where was it, Some, one of the colonies in America carrying Pocahontas back to, uh, to England when she went to England. And so I thought that was kind of a weird coincidence in all this. But uh, that's where Pocahontas comes into this story. Why you can find nutmeg all around the world. That is a bus full of people as well. During the 1800s, like 1811, the, uh, the British were able to once again recapture the Banda Islands. And when they did it this time, they just stole some of the nutmeg trees and planted them in their colonies and here in India. They planted them in Penang, in Malaysia, and other places. And so, when they did that, they essentially, you know, ended the monopoly. The monopoly. <laughs> the monopoly that the Banda Islands had for uh, forever. And so, now of course you can find nutmeg in many other places. And uh, it's not just the Banda Islands. But like I said, the Band Islands are so freaking cool. I got a chance to go there a couple years ago. Up up here, finally the sun's out. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Top of Banda! Woo! And I'm hoping that here in India, I'll be able to find some gems like that. Uh, in Indonesia, of course, is a, a nation of 17,000 islands. India is a country of, I don't know, hundreds if not thousands of different cultures and peoples and places to see, so, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, and how this story kind of touches everybody else was, I just want to say like, yeah, you go into anyone's spice cabinet nowadays and you'll be able to find nutmeg probably in your spice cabinet. And so, now you know where nutmeg comes from. And there was only one place in the world where it came from at one point. Okay. And that's also how the nutmeg came to India. That's kind of the only way. Namaste. Up kissing. Camera. Huh? Camera. And so that's kind of the only connection that nutmeg has to uh, India is that the British were able to take some of the trees here and I think down in South India, like by Karela, they have nutmeg plantations and so that's where they came from though. So in case you were wondering, here's a park, let's go check it out. I think this is a guy named Baba Seba. Now that was the nickname he was given. I want to ask. Where are you from? Baba Seba? Baba Ambedkar. Ah, okay. I've been... Huh? I've been... The one who formed the Indian Constitution. He wrote the, the Constitution, the Constitution right? Constitution of ah, India. Okay. He framed the Constitution. He framed it. He is the, uh, the father of the Constitution. Constitution. Or ah, okay. Thank you. Welcome. Ah, okay. So I'm actually reading a book uh, right now about... It's not necessarily it's about him. He's not the main character, but uh, his name comes up a lot because it's a book about the, uh, the Dalits and the, uh, the outcast people here in India. And that's another thing I was probably going to talk about a little bit in some of these videos, like the, the caste system here in India and, and uh, the untouchables, so to speak. And, and this guy right here wrote the Indian constitution and the story that I'm reading it uh, it follows two two uh, two people who were born in the Dali community and it just kind of talks about their lives and the struggles they had to go to go through uh, growing up being an, un an untouchable it's so crazy the discrimination and things that people had to go through here in India but 
Uh, I didn't really want to talk about that in this video too much until I saw that portrait. But that guy, uh, I was just reading this book last night. <laughs> this morning, I have jet lag. I woke up at three and I was like, ah, I can't go back to sleep. So I started reading the book and I was, I, I was looking up that guy on Wikipedia tonight because they kept uh, talking about Baba Seba, Baba Seba. He was like the leader of this uh, movement the, uh, the lowest caste of people here in India and he had uh, convinced probably thousands of people in Mumbai to, to uh, denounce Hinduism and you know convert to a you know maybe Buddhism or Christian or uh, uh, Islam or something and so but I just find it amazing that after reading this book I'm not actually done with it but you know, he's the, the father of India, or the, he's not the father, he's the father of the, uh, the Constitution. He wrote the Constitution, and he was born a Dali. He was born uh, part of the, as part of the lowest class citizen in India. And so, I just thought that was a pretty cool, heartwarming story. Yes, sorry, hey. Okay. I have a lot of uh, phrases in my Hindi arsenal, a lot of questions I can ask, but I don't understand what they say when uh, they answer those questions. That's where I'm at in the uh, language learning process right now. I can ask quite a few questions, but when they, when they reply, it's not quite making sense yet. Hello. Hey. Look at that selling. Hello. That looks kind of interesting. Some kind of uh, breaded custard-looking thing. Biscuits, some pond, some bread. Okay. A lot more to come here in India. Hopefully they'll be a little more exciting than this video. This is a lot of just storytelling. I just wanted to, I don't know, I didn't know where to start the India series. And so I love this story about the Banda Islands and uh, the story about nutmeg and I just wanted to share it with you guys and once I found out that there were a lot of nutmeg plantations in India I was like oh there's a link that's a story I can tell <laughs> all right oh I know what I can do I got me a new toy when I was back home in Texas for the holidays and so uh, let's go let's go test it out let's do it Not really sure who this is, but I imagine looking at the dates he was born from 83 to 66. India gained its independence in 1947, and so I, I imagine he was one of the uh, founding fathers, one of the freedom fighters here in India. Somebody who probably helped lead the uh, lead the way with Gandhi and Nehru and uh, Baba Seba. Can we take photo of Yeah. This sign says Guppy, a Japanese wonderland. Hmm. Let's go check it out. That's it. Guppy. Guppy. Yeah, yeah, eh? Guppy? What is guppy? Uh, it's restaurant. Uh, guppy meaning? Kana? 
Yes. Bojan? It's a restaurant. Uh-huh. Okay. Restaurant. Under yes, the sector. Huh? The... Oh, nice. Can I see? Yeah. Hello, hello. Hi. Welcome. I saw uh, the geisha uh, on the window over there. Wow, this is a really nice restaurant. Beautiful. Beautiful. What time do you open? You're open, sir. You're open right now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I was just walking by and I saw the geisha. I was like, wow, this is cool. And I saw the, the guppy sign. How long has this been here? Uh, 10 years. 10 years now? Yeah. Wow. So we have chain of restaurants in India. Uh -huh. So uh, the parent company is called Olive. So okay. we have uh, Mediterranean cuisine, we have Indian cuisine, we have uh, club also. So okay. we have variety of Asian restaurants, so this is Japanese. Ah, interesting, interesting. So we have in uh, Mumbai, we have in uh, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Bangalore, multiple cities. Okay, you got a sushi bar? Yes, yeah, sushi, live sushi. Nice, okay. Yeah. Sushi in New Delhi, huh? And uh, chef uh, won uh, Best Sushi Chef Award in uh, 2018, chef? In 2018. He was the Best Sushi and he uh, uh, part, uh, represented India for uh -huh. Sushi Championship in Tokyo. Oh, oh really? So he's uh, what is there. Nihongo dekimasu ka? Yeah. Nihongo dekimasu ka? No. No? Uh, no. <laughs> he went to Tokyo? Yeah, he was, he was in Tokyo to participate in uh, World Championship ah, for Sushi. Okay. I see, I see. Like, very... Interesting. Like, like, uh, one of the... Very cool, yeah. very cool. Uh, I guess, is there a website? Sure. A website or yeah, Instagram? We have website, yes. Can I see? Yeah. And also, uh, these buildings, a lot of residential... Uh, yeah, so this uh, building is... Uh, first floor is a residential, ground floor is a market. Uh, okay. So All the way down. Yeah. I see. So our website is uh, guppybyai.com. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank I'll you. share it. Thanks. Appreciate okay. it. All right. Thank you. Bye, Yvonne. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Where are you from? Uh, America, sir. Yeah, America. America, yeah. Visiting? Texas. Texas. Texas, yes. Channel here, can I know your channel? Channel is uh, Nick K. Nick K, okay. Nick K. Okay. So, alrighty. Can I, can I see? Yeah. Alright. Hello. Hi. This is the office. The office? Okay, so all the. So, Guppy is all this. So not it's the other other person office. Oh, a different office. Ah, I see. Okay. You, know, you can cool. see the answer all the. I can walk through here. Yeah, oh, cool. Walking. Alrighty. Okay, so I guess you can walk in through here, and there's a lot of other murals and paintings. I mean, I guess the idea of this was uh, to paint all these older buildings that you know maybe hopefully people would come here and take their Instagram photos and uh, you know bring more people into this area. You know, like they did in uh, in Malang, in Indonesia. There's the the Rainbow Village that I I visited once, and they did a similar thing. They painted all the buildings all bright colors and whatnot. What's up, little doggy? Hey, okay. He walked over here smiling, and I when I said hello to him, he kind of got a little tense there. Okay. See, I'm guessing at one point maybe that was the idea to to uh, to bring people here and. To, it's kind of a shame people have just spray painted all over them and kind of ruined it, you know? So, guppy. But right in the middle of this place, you have a. <coughs> hey, oh, I know, it's okay. It's okay. He's just doing his job. Who needs a man? when I have the internet. <laughs> oh
whatever they're making here looks and smells delicious. And it has drawn a crowd, that's for sure. He just finished them too. I hope he, uh, I hope he starts cooking some more. Yeah, those are going to go quick. And so I, hopefully he makes another round and I'll try them. Looks like this guy over here is in charge of mashing the potatoes. Got some coleslaw looking stuff over here, a bunch of chopped onions, maybe some chilies. Me dek chata. It's gonna be sky. What dosa? Dosa. Dosa, okay. So this is. Yeah, bada. Dal bada. Come here, take video, Kazakta. Take video, okay? Okay. What the pump? What the pump? Pancake. We spread this one out nice and uh, flat. This one over there is a little thicker. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I do I do have a little pot over here where you can wash your hands, which that's good. This place is the place to be for lunch, it looks like. That looks good, don't it? All right. All right, so. Looks like we got some sort of curry here, some sort of white sauce, and the dosa. I think there's uh, all those onions. I think there was some cilantro in there, some peppers maybe, uh, the potatoes. Yeah, looks good, smells good. Let's give it a go. Nice and hot, nice and crunchy. Yeah, you can taste those seasonings. <laughs> Mm. I think I found a winner. This thing, all the potatoes inside is pretty damn heavy too. I mean, this place has had a line of people the whole time I've been here. It's either the only place to eat in this uh, little small neighborhood, or it's really good. I'm gonna go with this really good. Yeah, this uh, soup has uh, some more potatoes in it, I think. Looks like maybe some pumpkin, I don't know. This looks interesting. I'm not really sure what I'm eating, but. Ooh, it's kinda lukewarm. Kind of grainy. Oh no, I'm not. I know I'm not selling that very well, but that's pretty good too. It's kind of messy, that's for sure. The more you eat of this dosa, the more the onions and the chilies or whatever they got in there, they start making an appearance. It's not near as spicy as uh, Indonesian food, that's for sure. There we go. There's the culprit. Uh oh. Do not hit the uh, clothes. Okay, we're safe. This is my new toy. It is the uh, Hover Air X1. It's a uh, controllerless, flightless drone. Uh oh. 
Yep, there he goes. Oh, I messed it up. All right. Hmm. Well, if it's going to hit anything, hitting a gate like that is probably a good idea. You see, it has these uh, propeller guards on the side. You can uh, adjust the settings in the app on your phone. And then you just like you just press a button, and those are all the different settings that you can change it to. Hover, uh, follow, dolly, orbit. And uh, I should have had it a little bit closer to me. Anyways. Pretty cool, huh? Acha? Yeah. It's nice, huh? And then it just it folds up like that. And, uh, all right, that's it. Okay. That's going to do it for uh, the first video here in India. Um, yeah. More to come, that's for sure. Hello. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ease into the India videos and uh, I thought this would be a pretty cool place to come check out. But uh, I think a lot of the uh, the paintings are, yeah, they're kind of, you saw them, you saw them. Not much upkeep around here. <laughs> Definitely looked a lot different in the video I saw on YouTube from a few years ago. Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for this video. Alrighty, <clears throat> man, you can tell I haven't done this in a while. I have already lost my voice. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, I haven't been talking much lately. Just want to say uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, a, lot more to, a lot more to come from India. So there are a lot of places to see in India. I've read a lot about it and uh, I'm excited. There's a lot of videos that I want to shoot here in Delhi, but... I don't want to stay here too long, but there are a lot of places I do want to see here and uh, record and talk about. So, all right, let's get on out of here. Thanks for watching. I hope wherever you are, you're doing well, staying safe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Shalom. Hey. Let's go. Let's go. Huh? Blogger, are you blogger, blogger, blogger? Blogger, yeah! Okay, okay. Okay. Alright, one last thing. I just got dropped off by my Uber driver. And uh, this is where I got... Uh, I was supposed to get dropped off. When I arrived here uh, a couple of nights ago at 1.30 a.m. from the airport. So this is what the road looks like to get to my place, which is on the other side. They're just redoing this street. That's why it looks so bad. It's not normally like this. Um, but when we pulled up to this place at 1.30 a.m., a, a taxi driver stopped right here. And he's looking down this road and he's like, yeah. I can't get down the road and like he expected me to get out and I was like man I am not about to get out and uh, walk down this road that looks like uh, I don't know it kind of looks like a bomb went off in a way <laughs> uh, I didn't have internet I didn't have a uh, phone and so I was like no and so actually I was able to use uh, my very broken Hindi and ask him to use his phone to call my Airbnb which he did and we were able to go around and uh, everything was all right, but this was my first sight when uh, I arrived here a couple nights ago at 1.30 a.m. Was not about to walk down here with uh, no service. Anyways, it's actually not a bad neighborhood. Well, maybe we'll walk around in the next video and uh, do a little bit of Jalan Jalan. Signing off.